morning folks and welcome to the Happy Hooker YouTube channel. This morning, um, the weather's in Clements. Uh, I'm down in Anglesey, I can't do my job today, I'm not stripping nobody's roof off in this sort of weather, so there's only one thing for it in there. <laughs> it's about seven, half seven this morning, uh, now. Um, somebody got out of bed late, <laughs> so I'm going to go down onto Triada Bay um, and see if I can catch any fish. All I've got for bait is frozen lug. I couldn't get any fresh worm for loving the money. I tried everywhere, but I couldn't get any. Nobody had any. So frozen lug it is. Uh, this morning I will be. I've managed to root out my old Shakespeare agility. Now I've had this rod for years and years and years, and I swear by it. I've bished it. I've bashed it. I've dropped it on the floor. I've kicked it around. It's been thrown in vans. It's been, it's had at least three house moves. Um, and all the eyes are still spot on on it uh, Nothing's wrong with it. The blank's fine. It, it's a good rod and I really for a low budget rod uh, I, I think at the time when I bought it, it were about 70 quid um, But for a low budget rod They're absolutely spot on. Sorry. I've got a bit of uh, water on my screen uh, Is that better? There we go um, Now the rod I was using last week was Lily's uh, the Sonic Vader now for me, a rod should be able to take a knock and a, a bit of a bish and a bosh. It got blown over when we were at, um, I can't remember where we were, Clandona, I think it's called. When we were over there, it got blown over on the beach um, and then it landed on some pebbles. And as a result of that, uh, four of the ceramic eyes all smashed out. So for me, that's absolutely no good. Um, not impressed with it at all. Okay, I wouldn't. Re I wouldn't really recommend getting one of them. Uh, they're probably about the same price as these agility rods. And um, well, my thoughts on it are: a rod should be able to take a nick and a knock and a bit of a bish and a bosh, especially with me. Uh, I can be a bit rough with them. Uh, even though with that with that Sonic Vader, I wasn't too rough with it. Uh, and like I say. Four of the eyes, the end eye bust. Um, the, the, these are all on the top section. There's only one eye on the bottom section. That didn't bust. Uh, but there's, there's two eyes that are cracked and ready for falling out, and two eyes that had actually fell out. Uh, but anyway, that, that's another story in it. Um, I'm just about to put my tackle together. I'm going to whip down onto the beach and uh, see what we can catch. I'll let you know when I get there. See you in a bit. Right, guys. <clears throat> I'm down on the beach now. What a beautiful place it is. I'm gonna go in that corner there, fish out towards, well, out towards the sea, obviously. <laughs> uh, and I'm gonna back myself up them rocks as the water comes in. Um, looking forward to it. Looks like a nice little, uh, it's flat calm actually. It, it could have done with a bit of a surf on it. Now I've just, I'm looking beyond the camera, sorry. Uh, I've just seen, something dive in the water not too far out probably be a cormorant but uh, you never know I'll aim at the cormorant it's not there for no reason is it could be chasing sand eels about or something won't it um, let's get on with it I should have been here an hour ago <laughs> in the dark I might have caught a fish then but I'm sure we'll catch one now see you in a bit Right guys, I'm at my designated spot. Uh, I did say I was going to start on the sand and work my way up the rocks, but the water's high enough up to um, actually start on the rocks. The camera just switched itself off, I think I pressed the wrong button. I found myself a nice levelish platform. Um, and what I will do is, as the tide comes up, I'll back up up these rocks. Uh, I'm not sure how high it's going to come, but looking at the, uh, the difference in colour on the rocks, it goes from a dark colour to a light colour. I'm assuming that's around about where the tide comes through. Um, nice and daylight. I've got my phone with me. Should be safe. Now the wind is blowing from that direction. So because of that, I faced, I faced my rod into the wind. Because if I put it side on with my tripod, it'll um, it'll just blow it over. So I've more, I've less chance of it blowing over with it facing into the wind. Uh, another thing to to point out is. 
well you can see that but I always find a little nook or a crevice to put the feet in on the rod rest like so so that it just gives it that little bit of uh, extra stability but like I said I'll just I'll just push up the as the tie comes in on me uh, on the rig it's just a, a shot boat two up flapper um, and I've put on it the bit of frozen lug now it doesn't look the best and to be fair I'm not over keen on using frozen lug unless I'm on the Mersey uh, so all I can do is cob it out and see what happens and that's what's going to happen right about now see you in a bit right guys <laughs> I've been here about my rod's been in the water about 10 minutes um, and I'm just not feeling it here uh, it's it's more of a it's more of a nighttime venue this and I know this and I got up late and and I should have uh, I should have realised that so I'm going to have a change of venue I'm going to go up to what they call Macro Rock which is about three maybe four miles from here um, it's a little bit treacherous getting down the rocks but I'm sure and I know that there's more chance of catching uh, fish there in daylight and uh, you, you, you cast it straight into deep water there as well uh, I've, I've done all right on it previous let me just wipe my lens sorry I've done all right on that venue previous it's not cleaned it has it there's that better I've done all right on that venue previously uh, in the daytime he said there's a lot of pollock there, there's a lot of rass there and obviously in summer it's called mackerel rock for a reason so the next time you see me I'll be over there I'll uh, speak to you shortly right guys I'm here at uh, venue number two um, what I will do is uh, in the co when I when I post the video uh, in the comment section I will post um, a link on Google Maps as to where this car park is um, when you get to the car park you will see a sign and a footpath you sort of follow that footpath down for a bit what I will do is while I'm walking down I'll do a bit of filming at um, while I'm walking down I'll do a bit of filming at key points uh, and show you where this mark is now it is not for the faint-hearted this uh, mark uh, you've got to go down a, a rock face and then you've got to shimmy round another rock to get actually to the point of uh, to, to, to mackerel rock um, now I know I'm 50, 52 I think, I'm 52 but I am still relatively fit and my advice would be if you're not relatively fit don't bother with this mark uh, and preferably you want to be in numbers, you want to have two, two or maybe three of you it will fish, I've seen four and five fishing off this rock at, at any one point um, like I said I'll do a little bit of filming on the way down to it and, uh, and show you the way to it see you in a bit Right guys, I'm at mark number one, I've come down the footpath, the uh, the van is up there on that car park, come down the footpath, down to your first, it's, uh, yeah, it's your first gate, uh, nice sign on it, breeze block there to keep it shut, uh, and then we will be heading down that footpath towards them rocks at the back, um, over in the distance there, that's Triada Bay, um, what I'll do is I'll get down there and when we get to the rocks I'll do a bit more filming to show you what, what, how, how we get down that lot. Right, I've followed that footpath down now. Um, when you get to the bottom of the footpath you see the rocks open up into a little bay like that. And then you can see that, see oh, you can hear what I'm saying. Um, there's a path goes up, follow the rod, the path goes up through there. Um, I will just keep you on camera until I get over the top of it. Pretty much all in at once. Get through there. I'm going to be sheltered from the wind. Like I said, it's not for the faint hearted, this. Or not for anyone that's not fit enough to do it. Uh, give me a lens a wipe. It's only problem in the bloody rain, isn't it? Right, so we're coming up over the top now. And then we have to follow these rocks down there. 
I'm going to put the camera away because I need to concentrate while I'm getting down these rocks. Right guys, I've got halfway down now. I'm down through them rocks, so try and clean you up a bit. There we go. Uh, I am still on the top here. Now when you get here, there is like a, just a, a rod tip, a little rod tip on the rocks. There's an old wooden or steel with a bit of a platform. We've got to sort of head down into that and I'll do a bit more when I get into the... Right guys, I'm at the little uh, concrete plinth that's there. Now, once you get to there, I do actually have to go, I've left my rod there a minute, down this little ravine here. Got to shimmy round that, and get down there, a macro rock is at the other side of it. Um, and I'm thinking, once, once I'm down there, this rock's going to protect me from this wind and rain. As you can see, I have only brought a rod and a very small bag with a few bits in it. I've got my worms in there, I've got uh, a couple of weights and, uh, and a couple of rigs and that is it. I've brought nothing else with me, simply because I can't get the bloody camera lens dry. There we go. Simply because it's too dangerous. Um, I'll see you on the other side. Right guys, I'm through the ravine. Can't believe really keeping the camera lens dry. I'm trying for you folks, I do apologise. I'm through the ravine. I've just come down through that lot. Um, these rocks are very, very, very slippy. Um, but one thing you do have to be really, really aware of here is that where this water's rushing in here, it does fill up in here. On a big tide, all that's left is the top of that rock. And I know them rocks from previous experience are super slippy. So I'm going to head over towards towards the left hand side of that rock now. And I'm going to fish. Usually you catch wrasse and pollock. Um, you see the little, uh, the little island there. Just You've got the edge of the land and then you've got the little island. Usually if you, if you aim sort of 50 yards past that and just cast out. You don't have to cast it far. You will pick wrasse up and you will pick pollock up. Uh, I better get set up and get some fishing done, Anna. Always be aware of that water behind you because you can get cut off here very, very easily. Um, I am a little bit late, to be fair, but I'm experienced enough to know when to come off. See you in a bit. <laughs> right, guys. I didn't think I'd be out of the wind here, but um, it's not happening. I'm not out of the wind. Anyway, I have lobbed it in. I've lobbed it in over there. Um, I've probably only got an hour, maybe an hour and a half in this mark. But hopefully by that time, see look at this coming up here now. So you have got to be very, very aware of what's going on around you. You can't just come down here and sit on your laurels. Not at this time of tide anyway. Um, we will see, won't we? Hopefully I'll get a fish or two in the next hour, hour and a half, and I'll, uh, I'll retreat. See you shortly. <laughs> well, I've been here about half an hour now, guys. Look at that there, filling up behind me. Uh, it's starting to get a little bit naughty. Uh, I've timed it completely wrong, but at least you know how to get here, and you do catch fish here. Um, I've never really fished it in winter, to be fair. But I know all through summer, you get a load of pollock and a load of wrasse and, uh, and no matter where the mackerel are in, you, you do bash the mackerel on the feathers here. Um, I think it's time to uh, put my safety head on and do a retreat. So, although I haven't caught any fish, I really do apologise for that. My own fault, timing things wrong getting too giddy um, if you do like the stuff that I do uh, please do like and subscribe uh, I really do appreciate it uh, but until next time ta -da for now <laughs> I know I've done the ta-da for now bit guys sorry I'm really struggling with the rain on my lens um, just thought I'd show you this this is what we have to get back up now them rocks out there next to the sink which is only there uh, probably some of the slippiest rocks that I've ever encountered in my life. They're covered in um, like a red mossy seaweed 
and uh, trust me, it's slippy. Um, I'm going to get myself up these rocks, all nice, and, all nice and safe, and I'll do me ten half an hour when I'm back at the van, so you know I'm still alive. <laughs> See you in a bit, folks. <laughs> Look at this, guys. These are the only other folks that are stupid enough to be out in this, as well as me. <laughs> well, I'm up the rock safe anyway. Um, it's just, a, it's just a gentle walk back to the van now. Uh, do some puffing and blowing while I'm going. See you shortly. Right, guys, I'm back at the van. <laughs> I'm very glad to be so too. Uh, my legs are absolutely sopping. My boots are full of water. Uh, the rest of it is not bad. It's a little bit damp here and there, but nothing to either about. Uh, what time is it? Quarter past ten. So yeah, I didn't, I didn't manage very, very long there at all. I don't know how I got the um, the wind direction so wrong. Uh, and I am quite experienced at reading the wind and which way it should be blowing and, and where it should be sheltered and, and so on and so forth. Uh, it might just be worth mentioning, we do go round into there in, uh, with the boats in the summer, in the summer once to catch pollock and mackerel and stuff. It, it, it is a good mark. Um, but as, as you've seen, if you're not fit enough or you've got limited mobility or you're just a lazy pig, it's a, it's a no-no for you. Um, I hope, I hope you've enjoyed watching me <laughs> as much as I've enjoyed uh, wandering about and walking up and down the rocks. It's been a few years since I've done that, but I still enjoyed it. Um, and now it's feeding time. Let's go and find some food. Um, I'm starving. Find some food, get back to the hotel, hot bath, and a nap. Ta da for now.